crazy, but uh, Sunday, kind of special. I imagine you were watching the game Sunday. Put me in your, in your brain. Well, there's a lot of things going through my head. I think first and foremost, uh, I'm from Akron, obviously, born and raised. Uh, tremendous pride in the region, uh, both Cleveland, Akron, Northeast Ohio. And then I felt like one of my sons was playing as well with LeBron. So a lot of emotion for me personally because I, I have such belief in him and, and just our community as a whole. And I just wanted something special for our, our community. So I, I, I have to believe that watching a basketball game when you're a basketball coach is a whole lot different than the uh, casual fan sitting yeah. back and, and screaming at his TV. But people are talking a lot about LeBron and how driven he seemed. I mean, those two 41-point games has to tell us something. Well, I think the thing that, that most people probably don't understand is what he really tried to do with this. So he was kind of like the orchestrator of everything. So he started out and he knew that in order to win the championship, he needed others to help him. So he tried to get a lot of people involved and plan A went poorly early on. So then he said, okay, I need to score in game five and six. And he did that. And then he realized that, hey, I got to be somewhere in between in game seven. And I think that's what the brilliance of, of what he stands for. Uh, he can kind of change gears and affect the game in so many different ways, but probably the most important way is just his leadership and understanding of what it takes to win. And that's not a lot different than really, I mean, he's a, he's a man, he's mature, but that's not a lot different, it seems to me, than the way he approached the game when you were coaching him in high school. I tell people this all the time. I've coached a lot of college players, not as many high school players, but that team I had in high school was one of the smartest teams as far as IQ, understanding how to win and LeBron again was one of the main ingredients obviously Drew Joyce has an unbelievable basketball IQ as well but LeBron made other guys better and there's a lot of great players in that league but there's very few guys that can make players better but also people better so you look at the bird man all of a sudden this guy had a lot of issues and he made him not only a great player but a good person J.R. Smith on and on and on guys that haven't won anything in the playoffs and all of a sudden now they're they're playing in two successive championships so this guy has a knack of just resurrecting things and 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 that's a special trait and um i i've, I've read that you in the past believe that he's resurrected your career as well well you look all the way down the line he took a guy that was a college coach that had good success and then fell flat on his face and made him a successful college coach again. He took a high school that was struggling and now this high school is doing well. Uh, just everything this guy touches, the Midas touch. Look at Cleveland over the, the years he was gone, they struggled, they couldn't win, they couldn't get in the playoffs. And then immediately he comes back in their championship quality. So it tells you something about him for sure. Right. So he did come back and uh, when he came back, he wasn't a promise and, and that very thought provoking letter that he wrote he said that it was his desire, his dream, his wish to bring a championship here. When you just read that letter did you have to what degree did you think that that we'd get here today? Well when you have a guy like LeBron James uh, anything's possible. You're going to be in the mix immediately. So now if you have enough pieces, and I do, I do believe this, he left because he didn't think he could win championships in Cleveland at that time. But he also came back knowing that he could put the pieces together. This guy knows, he knew that they were going to get the guys that they got. Mm -hmm. And so once he came back, I knew he'd be in the mix to try to do this. And even game seven, you know, Steve Kerr and those guys, they were saying, oh, we're still in good position, which they were. But in Game 7, the last guy you want to play against is LeBron James. Tell me about that. Let's, let's talk about that because, you know, again, looking at this from a fan's perspective and especially with, a, you know, the way we've been jinxed in uh, Cleveland professional sports all these years, you get to Game 7 and, you, boy, I mean, you want to be optimistic, but it's hard. You, you seem to think that there was good reason to be optimistic. Well, I didn't think it was a sure thing for, you know, by any means, but I did think that they had a legitimate chance to win the game. I thought they were in bad shape when it was three to one, but when they won the, the game, uh, you know, at Golden State, all of a sudden that script 
kind of flipped a little bit. And I think more so than anything, psychologically, I, I'm not sure they really believed they could beat Golden State going in, but all of a sudden now they, they kind of got that confidence, got that monkey off their back because Golden State kind of owned them a little bit throughout the regular season and even last year in the playoffs. And I thought that that kind of changed once they won that game at Golden State. LeBron, um, he's, a, he's just in the community too. He's a real special guy, isn't he? He is. I, I, I mean, as great a player as he is, he just has this instinct for people's people and doing the right things and committed to, to people that have been good to him, loyalty. Uh, I just am so proud of what he stood for. Uh, obviously, none of us are perfect, but he's about as close to uh, you know, just doing the right thing on a consistent basis uh, of any athlete I've ever seen. Take me behind the scenes, Coach. You obviously have had some personal moments with this guy. Um, you know him better than I do. What, uh, what can you share with us about LeBron in your personal moments with him that, that helps us get to know him? Well, he's a caring guy. I think, uh, you know, when you have a shoe deal at the University of Akron that only Ohio State and any, anybody else has. That shows you how committed he is to others. Uh, he, he's sensitive. He cares about what other people think, uh, almost to a fault. Mm -hmm. He's team-oriented. Uh, he's, just, he's just a guy that has a knack. I mean, he just, he just has a feel for what, what makes people tick. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, he's, I think Tyron Lue said it the best when he said he's just got a big heart. He's got a huge heart and a great mind uh, bes besides having great physical ability. So time is ticking out, uh, down on this game. LeBron goes down hard. His arm or his wrist is hurting. They've got a three-point lead, which isn't safe when you're playing uh, the Warriors. He's got two shots. He misses his first. What are you thinking when you see him, when you look in his eyes and he's about to make that second shot? Well, I was just hopeful for him because I, I get so sick of the naysayers with this guy. This guy plays the game more the right way than maybe any player in the history of the game. Uh, as close to Magic Johnson as I've ever seen, you know, with the ability to score. And so the last thing I want is for him to miss the free throw where people said, oh, you know, he didn't make a big play after all the big plays, after big plays that he's made throughout. So I want him to just make it and put, the, put all those naysayers to rest. So we were at, we watched the game at St. Vincent, St. Mary's, which, you know, some of, I, th I think a lot of people, Cleveland sports fans, will remember where they were and what they were doing that night. Uh, and uh, St. Vincent, St. Mary's was just a special place for us to be. What is his legacy there, and how does this seal it for the kids who were there today, do you think? I think the beautiful thing about Akron is we have a lot of traditions all throughout the city. So you've got the Catholic school system, the private school system with CVCA, St. Vincent, St. Mary, Hoban, Walsh, they're all great institutions. So the pride that people have in that school goes way back to their grandfathers uh, going to school there, their fathers, their mothers, and uh, just when you add LeBron to the mix there, it's, it's unbelievable. And now Hoban and Walsh and those schools have the same thing, only they don't have him. Uh, and, you know, the thing about him is he cares about those schools too. That's what's, what's crazy about this guy is he has just so much love for this city. Uh, and I know what he feels like because I was away for, for a while too, and there's nowhere I'd rather live than Akron either. So I, I, I feel the same way he does. Yesterday when he pulled up in his neighborhood, there in Bath Township, he was mobbed. Uh, just so many hundreds of people out there wanting to say thanks. Uh, a lot of them touched by his foundation. Um, is it time to put up a statue for uh, LeBron James somewhere here? Well, he certainly deserves it. I mean, uh... I mean, we should put up probably 500 statues, really. I mean, he's done a lot. I mean, you think about the responsibility that he had. The automobile industry moves out of Cleveland. The steel industry's had a hard time. The rubber companies are out of Akron. You know, it's been tough times for Northeast Ohio. We haven't won in a lot of big sports. Mm -hmm. And this guy is like the ray of optimism for our community. Just think about when he left, people, 
I, I think the biggest thing was it was depression. You know, people, mm -hmm. people were upset because they thought, oh boy, our, our way out of this is gone. So yeah, they should put up statues and uh, I mean, I'd contribute to it, I know that. Uh, well, sure, I mean, the optimism, you can sense the optimism now. The, I mean, when you see uh, Stipe, the, uh, the, the, the MMA fighter, he got his uh, title. Uh, the, the Monsters got their title. Now the Cavaliers have their title. I mean, it, and they couldn't have done it without his drive and his input and, and his impact on that team, could they? No, and the Indians are playing well. So, mm -hmm. you know, and just the community as a whole needed a, a, a shot in the arm just to know, hey, we are great. There's been a lot of great people that mm -hmm. have come through here, a lot of great Northeastern Ohio people, both academically, athletically, great business leaders. So we, we just have to have that pride. And I think he's a guy that jump starts everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, you hear people talk about athletics not being that important, but Notre Dame plays football. So it's the same thing with LeBron. This, this can really jumpstart our community. Right, okay. I, what else do we need to know? What else do you think is important that as, you know, as you're watching this game and as you're processing this win, uh, that, that you think we need to understand and know about LeBron James? Well, I think the, if you analyze, and I've done a lot of homework on this because again, I get mad because people are so critical of him. Mm -hmm. But if you analyze the teams that he's taken to the finals, right? Mm -hmm. They've done statistical analysis, and most of the teams that he has have been some of the worst teams statistically of any superstar. Yet people say, well, he was only, what, two and five in the finals, or two and six, mm -hmm. or whatever it was. But he had the worst guys with him. Right. You know, so again, like, here's a guy that, that makes everybody else around him better and can get to all these championships and we're gonna judge him on whether he wins that championship or not. It's just mind boggling to me how critical people are of him, especially a guy that isn't a selfish guy, mm -hmm. gets teammates involved, but everything he does is under a microscope. So that's why I was so happy he won because once and, once and for all, once and for all, I think you know people are gonna finally have to admit that this guy is going to qualify as one of the greatest players of all time.